The topic is data mining. Data mining refers to the use of computer applications to discover insights in data that more traditional statistical approaches might overlook. Three critical concepts to keep in mind are artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data mining. These concepts often travel together. AI is capable of some human life functions like deduction and pattern recognition, and two mainstream examples are Deep Blue and the Jeopardy contestant Watson. Machine learning is an application of AI, and it enables computers to learn automatically to discover hidden patterns and relationships within data. And data mining is the process of applying a set of analytical techniques for machine learning and AI. So you can see these concepts are tightly linked and sometimes one term is used in place of another. Data mining is a complex process of examining large sets of data and some established standards have emerged. One of the most common approaches is called CRISP-DM. Another common approach is known as SEMA, but CRISP-DM tends to be more popular. And it's important to note that data preparation and modification is probably represent the most important steps of the process, that every good analysis relies on well-collected and well-maintained data. So before you do any type of modeling or mathematics, the key is good data. The CRISP-DM approach is outlined by this diagram. Generally, when approaching a new problem, you start with business understanding, so understanding the underlying application and context of the problem. Once that is understood, data is obtained and time is spent evaluating the data to fully understand the characteristics of the data. Once the strengths and weaknesses of the data are understood, data preparation takes place and those weaknesses can hopefully be remedied. This is where imputation or omission might be necessary. Once the data are ready, modeling can take place. Each model is evaluated, and if the results don't seem quite right or you can think of improvements, you can move backwards to modeling and even data preparation. Once a satisfactory model is selected, it is deployed. After deployment, it is important, however, to revisit that business understanding and follow the process periodically to ensure things are working and it's best in support of the business objectives. And this is just a text-based overview of the CRISP-DM cycle for your reference. Another approach to data mining is referred to as SEMA for Sample, Explore, Modify, Model, and Assess. While lacking specific steps for business and data understanding, the process is quite similar. While it is not explicitly shown in the diagram, I urge you to remember that if you assess a model and don't like what you see, you can always go back a few steps and take another stab at it. The further we dig into data mining and advanced modeling, the less definitive our solutions become and your judgment becomes so much more important. Data mining approaches are divided into two categories, supervised and unsupervised. In supervised data mining applications, the target or goal is known, but in unsupervised scenarios, the target or goal is not known. There are different methods for each. In fact, regression is a form of supervised data mining. The target or goal can be seen as the response variable, which in regression is represented with the letter Y and also called the dependent variable. So similarity measures gauge whether a group of observations is similar or dissimilar to each other. So it's important in data mining to find patterns and relationships and similarity measures are one way that we find patterns and relationships because we're, un we're identifying which points in the data seem to be near each other. So let's apply two common measures of similarity to these three pairwise observations, observation one, two, and three, and they're plotted 
on this chart so you can visually see where they're located. The Euclidean and Manhattan distances are common measures of similarity and calculated with the equations on the slide. It is important to note that the Euclidean distance is more influenced by outliers than the Manhattan distance. I think it's always easier to work with these types of equations with the actual numbers, so let's move on and see the calculations. Using the values from our example, we calculate the Euclidean and Manhattan distances for our points. So in the first Euclidean equation, note we are looking for the distance between observations 1 and 2. Note how the observation values are input into the equation. In the first brackets are the values for the first two observations for x1, so 3 minus 4. And in the second set of brackets are the values for the first two observations for x2, 4 minus 5. Comparing observations 1 and 3, we would first take the values from x1 observation 1 and subtract from it the value for x1 observation 3 and do the same for x2. The equation for the Manhattan distance works the same way with inputting numbers, but note the different outcomes. We see for the first observation you are only two units apart, but because observations 1 and 3, the distance is 10. This is because to get between 3, 4, and 10, one requires dropping down three units and moving over seven units, equaling 10. So as illustrated on the chart with the blue arrows, you can see them how the Manhattan distance works. To get those values, to get the value for the difference between one and three, we go down from four to one and then over from 3 to 10. When working with multiple variables expressed in different units, the scale of each variable can influence distance measures, distorting the true distance between points. There are two common approaches to making values unit-free to ensure each value receives the appropriate weight. The first is the standardization approach, where you compute a z-score and express the distance of the observation from the mean in terms of standard deviation. So these values can be positive or negative, and they are in standard deviations. Another approach is the min-max normalization, where each value is rescaled to be between 0 and 1 based on the minimum and maximum values in the data set. So just consider a sample of five consumers with their annual income and hours spent online per week. The distance measures calculated from raw data can be distorted because the annual income values are much larger than the values of hours spent online per week. So I urge you to apply the standardization equations and see if you can find some of the same values shown in this table. So give that a shot and I'll catch you next time.